Hey everybody, Nick Marzinski here at trappinglight.com. And in my prior video, I talked about filters and I, I kind of just gave an introduction on how they work within Photoshop and how they're different than adjustment layers. And one of the things that I said when I was talking about filters is that filters are basically, for the most part, kind of a, a one and done sort of thing, where in that, you know, in this case, this particular image right here, I wanted to create a tilt shift effect, so I use a Gaussian blur filter. Well, I clicked on this image, went up to filter, went up, went over to blur and Gaussian blur. And then once I set my filter um, radius here and I clicked OK, at that point the filter was applied. And if I didn't like the way that it looked, I pretty much had to start over again. So I'd have to, you know, basically drag this down into the delete bin and redo everything and redo the filter and then redo the mask, OK? And I said in that video, there's kind of a way that you can make them non-destructive, but because it was an introductory video, I really didn't want to get into it. Well, now that I've laid down the basics for how filters are, what how filters work and what they are in Photoshop, I want to talk a little bit about how um, you can do non how you can make filters so that they're non-destructive. So that if you don't like the way a filter looks or you want to just tweak it a little bit, you can do that without having to actually get rid of all of uh, get rid of the layer and start over from scratch. Okay. Now this technique that I'm going to show you comes with a little bit of a warning in that what it involves is creating a smart object and smart objects the way that I'm using them here are only available within the full version of Photoshop within Photoshop Creative Suite or Creative Cloud so if you're using a copy of Elements what I've talked about in the last video with you know creating filters this way is the way that you're gonna to wanna to do it however if you're using the the uh, the, the full version of Photoshop, you have additional tools that are available and one of these tools with the smart object is very very flexible in allowing you to make um, these non-destructive edits using filters which are normally destructive tools. So what I want to do for the rest of uh, the video here is talk about how they work. So if you're using elements you may actually want to stop watching right now because if you watch this and you go, wow, this is a really great technique, I, I love it. The problem is, is that in order to, to get it, you're going to actually have to get a copy of full Photoshop. So that's the warning. Um, and let me show you how uh, smart objects work. So this is another copy of the exact same image. So the it's it's got the background, the warming filter, and then the levels adjustment for brightness. The only thing that hasn't been added at this point is a filter. So at this point I'm going to want to do the same thing that I did um, with the prior um, version which is to create a stamp visible of all of the edits that I've made on a new layer. So I'm going to press and hold Control, Shift, Alt and then press E on my keyboard. Uh, and if you're on a Mac that's Command, Shift, Option, E and that creates a new layer on top of all of the other layers that incorporates the background, the warming filter and the levels adjustment. So I'm going to rename this and call this my filter layer. Okay, so at this point, workflow is exactly the same as, as a prior image, okay? Here's where things change a little bit. I'm going to right-click on this layer, and I'm going to click Convert to Smart Object. Now, Photoshop is going to think for a minute, and nothing is going to really change outwardly about the, uh, about the image, and I have no idea why that pop-up came up just now. Um, but uh, what you can see is that in the layers palette, now that it's converted to a smart object, you can see this little uh, icon here in the lower right hand corner. And that icon is Photoshop's way of telling you, okay, this is a smart object. So what's a smart object? Well, basically a, a smart object is, is Photoshop looking at this layer and going, okay, I'm going to memorize every detail of this image data that's in this layer so that no matter what changes you make to it, no matter what filters you apply to it, and no matter how you transform the image, I'll always be able to get you back to this original image. So I'll know where you started from and, and, and the edits that you made to get to uh, a different um, version of this, including filters, including transformations, all that sort of stuff. So you can always get back to your original without any sort of destructive uh, uh, edits being applied. So we've converted it to a smart object. Now I'm going to go up to filter and I'm going to go to blur and go to Gaussian blur. Okay. And this looks exactly the same as it did before. I still have my radius slider and my preview button and then okay and cancel. So I'm going to want to select the blur that I want in this case. I'll go with something in the mid fives and then click okay. When that happens, we, we notice something else has changed in the layers palette here. Now Photoshop is telling me, okay, hey, you've got a smart filter and it's a Gaussian blur. If you look 
at this other version that was run without a smart object, Photoshop simply blurred the layer and gave me that and said, okay, there you go, filter's been applied. And then I had to apply the layer mask and do my painting so that I could get this dock here to be in focus and everything else to be out of focus. Here, Photoshop is not only telling, not only blurring the, the image for me like it did before, but it's also giving me a layer mask and it's also showing me, hey, you ran a Gaussian blur on it. So now that I've got my layer mask here, I can just go in with my gradient tool and blur the bottom deck, make sure that this is unblurred, and then grab a rectangular marquee, select this top area here, go back to my gradient tool by pressing G, and then blur the top part here, deselect it. At this point, I can just come in with my brush tool by pressing B, make sure my foreground colors are set to black and white by pressing D, and then I want a black foreground color, so I'm gonna switch it by pressing the X button so that my foreground color is set to black, Come in here with my brush, paint in the stairs so that now they're in focus. And this area here would also be in focus. And then I'm gonna paint that out. I'm gonna paint this in so that it's in focus. This sh I'll paint out so it's out of focus. And I'm also going to blur this seawall here on the layer mask. Again, I'm editing right on this layer mask that it's giving me here. And I'm just simply painting with black and white. Okay, so now I've managed to create the exact same effect here as I had here. But because I did it using a smart object, if I come in later and I go, you know what? It's not blurry enough. I need to change that. Well, here I've got no choice. I have to start over. I have to just delete this, run a new filter, and then do my layer mask again. Here, on the other hand, because I've got a smart filter, I can just double click on Gaussian Blur and I can boost the blur. I can drop it back down to zero. I can do pretty much whatever I want with the blur because since it's a smart object and Photoshop knows what the original image data look like, it allows me to be able to manipulate that filter any way that I want after I've already run it. So that's a really great tool or technique that you've got using smart filters is the ability to continuously go back and manipulate your filters. Right now I want to look at another example of this and in this case I'm going to start off in Lightroom. Okay, Here is an image um, that I took in Chicago last spring and I did it using a super zoom lens. So it was a Tamron 18 to 270. Okay, Really wide focal range. Okay, And so as a result it because of that it has a lot of um, <sighs> optical defects and one of the things that it does um, is that it also you get some barrel distortion here so you can see that all of these buildings are kind of slanted in towards the middle okay now I want to correct that now within Lightroom if I'm in the develop module I could just simply go right into lens corrections and I could correct it but because we're talking smart objects let me talk about how you can do it using a smart object and a filter right within Photoshop okay so I'm going to go up to photo and I'm going to go to edit in and normally if I were in Lightroom and I just wanted to edit my image I could select edit in Photoshop and it would grab this image drop it into Photoshop and let me edit it however if I know that I want to open it and run it as a smart object instead of clicking edit in Photoshop I can instead create open as smart object in Photoshop if I click that I get dropped right back into Photoshop and when this comes up you can see it already says image 5816 is smart object one in my layers palette I've got the little icon here in the lower right hand corner Photoshop is already treating this as a smart object at this point if I want to correct the way that these buildings are looking I can go up to filter go to lens correction uh, and go to custom and then go to vertical perspective and change this and the lens correction filter by the way if you're still watching this and you're using Photoshop elements even though you can't use a smart object you do have access to the lens correction filter so this is a powerful tool that you can use to correct uh, defects such as this where you've got your uh, your building slanted so then I click OK and it applies the filter so this is what it looks like after and before and you can see the change um, that it makes and it's rather significant okay now let's say that I want to add another filter at this point I'm going to go up to filter and I'm going to go to oil paint now this is a Photoshop only filter so elements users you don't have this sorry um, but it is kind of neat and it creates this really kind of interesting oil paint ish sort of effect um, 
and I'm just sort of playing with the settings to see what I like. And what I'm noticing, just doing a little bit of playing, and I could take the shine all the way down, but I kind of like what it's doing on the bottom in the trees. I, I kind of like the effect that I'm getting here in the trees. It's kind of giving this interesting swirl pattern. It almost makes like these look these these yellow trees make it almost look like they're you know on fire. But I really don't like the modeling that I'm getting here on the sky and in some of the buildings too. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to be able to keep the 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 the, the, the effect on the trees but get rid of it on the sky. So I'm going to click OK. And it's going to apply it. Now you can see what it's done here because it's a smart filter is that it applied it here. I've got my oil paint filter and my lens corrections all in one and I've got only one layer mask. The problem here is that if I want to edit, let's say that I want to paint out this oil paint in the sky, I can go OK, fine. I'm going to go on my layer mask, I'm going to grab my brush, and I'm going to make sure that my foreground color is set to black. And now I'm going to start painting so I paint out the effect. And you can see what is happening here is, is that not only am I painting out the effect of the oil paint filter, but I'm also painting out the lens correction. And that's not OK. I want to be able to just simply paint out only the oil filter effect, but leave that lens correction effect there. So I'm going to undo that. Let me show you how this works because the way that you need to do it when you're working with a smart object like this is a little bit counterintuitive. In order to pull this effect off where I'm masking out the oil paint but I'm continuing to have the lens correction applied, I'm going to need another version of this layer. So I'm going to right click on it and now I'm going to click New Smart Object via Copy. At this point I get a new version of the smart object. It still has the same smart filters, it still has the oil paint and it has the lens correction. At this point, I want to turn the oil paint filter off on this top layer. And you can see what happens is that it turns it off over the entire layer. Now, you might be thinking at this point, oh, that's great. Now I can just go in here and I can just simply paint on black where I want the oil paint filter to apply. But the problem is, is that you can't. And I'll show you why. Because if you do that, you're going to get the same problem that you had before. You're going to get this lens correction also painted out. So you can't simply do it that way and I'm just gonna undo that. Okay, the way to deal with this if you want to keep the lens correction but you want to also keep the oil paint filter on say the trees here, is you're gonna have to go here to this top layer, add a mask. At that point with this mask selected, now you'll be able to grab a brush tool with your foreground color set to black because now it will be hiding this entire layer here and then you can come in and paint over your trees and add that oil, oil paint effect back into the trees without losing the lens correction effect that you wanted right from the start. So working with smart filters allows you a lot of flexibility because with using this copy you can make these iterative changes to your filters and then mask that effect in. But it's important that you really think hard about what layer mask you're going to be able to use and how you can use that to their best effect because if you don't um, it can get really confusing really really quickly. So I'm just going to keep going through here with my brush tool painting on black on this layer mask to get the effect, the oil paint effect on the trees that I want while also retaining the lens correction. So that's an introduction on how smart objects work and how they can be used as filters within your work in order to create these interesting effects that can be difficult to, uh, to create and difficult to edit um, if you're just simply using a filter layer. However, like I said before, this is a technique that's only available if you're using the, the professional, the, the full version of Photoshop. Okay. If you are, however, I invite you to start looking at smart objects and whenever you're applying a filter, think about applying it as a smart filter first because then you'll have that element of non-destructiveness with the filter and you'll always be able to go back and make adjustments to it. If anybody has any questions on anything in this tutorial, please feel free to leave a question either in the comments in the YouTube channel or on my blog at trappinglight.com. My name again is Nick Marzinski. Thanks for watching.